What's going on guys, welcome to the video. So today we have some good news. Speaker of the House John Burko has had an official complaint lodged against him by Barrister Rebecca Butler. An official complaint has been lodged against the Speaker John Burko in light of his behaviour in the Commons. Of course, referring to the many things that he's been up to in recent times, including the Bed Act. Barrister Rebecca Butler has written to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards and an investigation into her claims will now follow. Now in a second I will read the letter that has been sent by Rebecca Butler outlining her complaint. Before that though we have this video so we'll take a look at that. Hands up who spotted the policy shift today. That's right, Brexit isn't happening on the 31st of October. Damien Green has come out and said in the next election the Tory party will not canvass on a no-deal Brexit. Well, which election? Because there isn't an election between now and the 31st of October, so that can only be after the 31st of October. Why would they be using those words if we were already out on Boris Johnson's no deal Brexit? No deal is better than bad deal, right? So how has this happened? John Burko has been and had a chat with David Sassoli, his equivalent, as it were, in the European Parliament. And to absolute, absolutely constitutional outrage, what they are going to manipulate is a situation where the EU will give us longer than to the 31st of January for an extension because they know there cannot be a referendum in such a short period of time. They are going to give us in the region of 12 to 14 months, plenty of time to have a referendum, plenty of time to have a general election. How do we get a general election? We can't. They've made that clear. They're going to put an amendment in to the withdrawal bill. They're going to put a motion in Parliament for another vote on a referendum. How did it go last time? The government had a 13 vote majority, 66 abstentions, most of whom were in the cabinet. And we critically relied on 16 abstentions from the Labour Party. So if everybody voted and held their vote next time the same way, the government will win by a tiny number. But don't forget those 20 Tory rebels. You need to put pressure on them because if you don't, we are lurching towards a second referendum courtesy of Mr Burko. And to add on to what Rebecca just said there in her clip, there is talk in the newspapers today that Jeremy Corbyn is going to support John Burko as the new Prime Minister. So that's something we'll have to take a look at later on, maybe. Now, let's take a look at the letter that she sent that outlines her complaint and go over that. All right, so here is her letter. It's a bit larger on this website, Unity News Network. Dear Mrs Stone, new complaint. John Burko, MP, Speaker of the House of Commons. I write to lodge a formal complaint against the Speaker of the House of Commons, Mr John Burko. The role of Speaker attracts a salary of £142,826 plus free residence and expenses. He is a public servant. As such, not only is he required to abide by the standards of the role he has acquired, but he is also banned by the Nolan standards in public life. My complaint against the Speaker is raised upon the following ground. Breach of Speaker's duty to remain non-partisan. John Burko has shown a blatant disregard for the most fundamental aspects of his position. On the 10th of January 2019, Mr Burko agreed to allow a vote on an amendment to a government motion tabled by Dominic Grieve. In doing so, he broke with precedent and ignored the advice of his officials when he approved a vote on the PM's Plan B response. I allege that he deliberately and arbitrarily changed the rules for the amendment. Business of the House motions are only amendable by Ministers of the Crown, but this drove a coach and horse for accepted normal practice. His motivation for this was to undermine the government who was pushing an orderly exit from the EU. He appears to have no accountability to anyone but himself. His actions are unreasonable and breach a legitimate expectation that he will remain non-partisan. The courts have set a limit to the lawful exercise of power by holding that the extent to which the measure impedes or frustrates the operation of the relevant principle must have a reasonable justification. That approach can be seen, for example, in R. Unison v. Lord Chancellor 2017, UK SC 51, 2017 3 WLR 409, Paris 80 to 82, and 88 to 89. Furthermore, Lady Hale, President of the Supreme Court, in the case of Miller v. PM 2019, UKSC 41, 
at Paris 49 to 51 clearly explains that prerogative powers and powers conferred by convention and the constitution are amendable to a legal test of reasonableness. So, following the most recent precedent, it is not simply statutory bodies who can be held to account in a court of law and the reasonableness of their decision making tested. So it seems Lady Howe, the president of the Supreme Court, might actually have allowed a way where Burko can be taken to court by someone because of the Miller versus PM case that she sided with Miller on, obviously, as we all know. I mean, obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know for certain, but from my limited knowledge of law, that's what that would mean if there's precedents and quoting paragraphs from the Supreme Court case, then there must be a basis for someone like Rebecca Butler to take him to court possibly. When a judge is challenged on bias, the law is clear. The test for apparent bias is whether the fair-minded and informed observer, having considered the facts, would conclude that there was a real possibility that the tribunal was biased. Porter versus Magill 2002 to AC 357. So it's not simply a case that bias on its own is proven, but that the appearance of bias is absent. It is a verb that a standard applying to the judiciary, working as they do as public servants with a duty to remain non-partisan, also applies to the speaker. Yes, it should. And if a lawyer here is quoting it, I would have to agree that it probably is. Number two, breach of the Nolan Standard of Integrity. The Nolan Standard states, holders of public office must avoid placing themselves under any obligation to people or organisations that might try inappropriately to influence them in their work. They should not act or take decisions in order to gain financial or other material benefits for themselves, their family or their friends. They must declare and resolve any interests and relationships. During the life cycle of the withdrawal bill through the House of Commons, Mr Burko has placed himself under an obligation to the members of the opposition parties and has demonstrated bias in so doing. He has been influenced by his own views on Brexit and proudly drives his wife's car bearing the sticker bollocks to Brexit. This alone undermines the dignity of the role of Speaker. In performance of his role as Speaker, he should be required to publicly state and declare in the words of Nolan his own interests and relationship connected with evading Brexit. Yeah, he should, but I don't think he really needs to. It's common knowledge why his position is on Brexit and how he wants to stop it. Why do you think he didn't just stand down before, when prorogation happened? Because he wanted to stay on and make sure we don't leave the EU. 3. Breach of the Nolan Standard for Objectivity Holders of public office must act and take decisions impartially, fairly and on merit using the best evidence and without discrimination or bias. I refer to the Speaker's conduct in the House of Commons generally, and specifically for his behaviour during the prorogation of Parliament. I attach for your reference a video clip of the Speaker during that ceremony on Monday the 9th of September. She links the video there. I will play a bit of the video for you to look at. In this matter. Oh, I can't do Wait a minute. Oh, I couldn't care less whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm more than happy if, if people have got the basic tolerance and manners to listen, they'd hear. I'm perfectly happy, as I've advised others, to play my part. Uh, but I do want to make the point that this is not a standard or normal prorogation. Yeah. It is. I don't require any assistance from you, Mr. Stevenson. You wouldn't have the foggiest idea where to start in seeking to counsel me on this important. I require no response from you. I require no response from you, young man. I require no response from you, young man. I require no response from you. Get out, man. You will not be missed. Please do your job. I was the point. I had already made the point. People have the manners to listen, which they haven't. The, the uh, order the that I will play my part. This is not, however, a normal prorogation. It is not difficult. It is not standard. It's one of the longest for decades, and it represents not just in the minds of many colleagues, but huge numbers of people outside an active executive fiat. And executive fiat and therefore I quite understand I've already said that Black Rod I respect and Black Rod is doing her duty and the Queen's Commissioners are doing their duty and I will play my part but I completely understand where I can it's nothing disorder I didn't require advice on order from you Mr Stewart you're a master of disorder man 
I completely understand why very large numbers of members are much more comfortable staying where they are. Mr Stewart, if you don't like it, you're perfectly entitled to your view. I couldn't give a flying flamingo what your view is. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Do your job. Yeah. Yeah. Do your job, for which you're handsomely paid. Yeah. It continues, he clearly insults and demeans members of the Tory benches, as you saw. In doing so, he undermines the dignity and role of the Speaker. He is and behaves like a bully, seemingly never held to account. Furthermore, on the 9th of October 2019, the Speaker met with his equivalent at the European Parliament to discuss ways in which the government's policy could be undermined. He openly admitted his role in facilitating what will be a second referendum on membership of the EU, having secured an extension. His bias is plain for all to see. It is not his position to undermine or sway government policy with any individual and abuses his post in so doing. For leadership. Holders of public office should exhibit the principles in their own behaviour. They should actively promote and robustly support the principles and be willing to challenge poor behaviour wherever it occurs. This speaker repeatedly displays poor behaviour. He has many allegations of bullying against him. His manner is bullying and vindictive. In a world where all parties declare a desire to encourage women to participate in Parliament, how can this man's behaviour be said to be conducive to that? He is an abomination. How can he legitimately show leadership when his own behaviour is so poor? Given that holders of public office are accountable to the public for their decisions and actions and must submit themselves to the scrutiny necessary to ensure this, Nolan Principle 4, I remain confident that in your role you will hold the Speaker accountable for his actions. I write this letter with the silent support of many people and look forward to your earliest response. I am available to give evidence to your committee at your convenience. I reserve my position to elaborate on these complaints should the need arise. Yours sincerely, Rebecca Butler, Barrister. Well, you can see there that Rebecca's having absolutely none of it. And I love how she's pointed out that people in public office are accountable to the public for their decisions and actions. So they must submit themselves to scrutiny. And she remains confident that the Parliamentary Standards Commission will uphold her complaint or at least investigate it. And so they should. But Rebecca, there's not silent support. There's very vocal support. Many people think that he is not impartial in the slightest. As a matter of fact, I think Joe Swinson's more impartial to Brexit than John Burko, to be honest. And she's about as anti-Brexit as it gets. But I expect before anything's done about this, John Burko would have left his position and likely managed to get out of it. But I'm glad someone's put it on public record anyway. Hopefully, the commission can work fast and we can have some action against him. Because I would say this little arsehole being held to account is long overdue, wouldn't you guys? I'm going to end the video there. I want to thank the channel's PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it up. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr Speaker when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>